Hey guys, welcome to today's class. Have fun. Okay, today we'll be looking at sound waves, first vibrations and resonance. And we're looking at vibrations in strings and pipes. So basically, all what we're looking at today are the movement of sound waves or trav the way sound waves are being propagated either from one medium to another and the characteristics of sound waves especially as a result of vibration in strings and pipes so quickly what do we refer to as sound or what do we refer to as sound wave now sound is obtained as a result of vibration in a material medium now the material medium might be air it might be water these are just examples of material mediums now these material mediums which helps to transmit the waves now in subsequent classes in previous classes i was able to discuss on types of waves we talked about mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves and i was able to tell us that an example of a mechanical wave is sound wave which we'll be discussing today and mechanical waves requires material mediums for the propagation of such waves so sound is a, is a form of wave a form of wave energy which is obtained as a result of vibration in a material medium which helps to transmit the waves so sound involves the transfer of energy sound involves the transfer of energy in the form of waves from one medium to another so in most cases now you have a source of the sound and you have maybe the listening points where a listener gets the sound which is being propagated so sound travels through material mediums and there's a lot of vibration through that medium so quickly we'll be looking at noise sound and music now what differentiates sound from noise and from music now talking about noise an unpleasant sound produced at different frequencies now i want us to record a frequency talking about frequency now which units in hertz it talks about talks about the number of cycles you're talking about frequency now <clears throat> referring to the number of cycles or oscillations in which a wave travels in one second so any form of sound in which we have different frequencies of the propagating waves is what referred to as noise <clears throat> so noise is a form of sound but in this case noise is an unpleasant sound produced at different frequencies so when we refer to noise we're talking about talking about sound we're talking about sound talking about noise sorry we're talking about sound waves unpleasant sound produced as a result of waves traveling at different frequencies alternating frequencies with respect to time so you have different waves at different frequencies and the sum of it all is all referred to as noise and the, the other way now <coughs> looking at music now music is a pleasant sound produced at the same frequency so a, another form of sound wave in which each of the propagated waves are produced from the same frequency which as a result of the harmony of the sound produced referred to such type of sound as music so there's a very sharp difference between noise and music noise is an unpleasant sound due to different frequencies okay so that sums up the difference between noise and music noise have no fixed frequencies that is alternating frequencies of vibration consist of irregular vibrations Whereas music composes of uniform vibrations, constant frequencies at regular frequencies of vibration. So quickly looking at the characteristics of sound wave. 
And the first characteristic of sound wave here is pitch and frequency. Now, pitch refers to the position of a note on the musical scaling, which depends mainly on the frequency of vibration of the medium and consequently on the source. So my note today is basically from two reference materials, making use of essential, essential physics and new school. So the two textbooks I'm making use of today. So I'll be drafting, uh, drafting out this stand, um, standard definition from these two textbooks. So looking at pitch now, pitch talks about the position of notes on the musical scaling, which depends mainly on the frequency of vibration of the medium and consequently on the source. So pitch and frequency goes hand in hand. Now pitch refers to the positioning of a note on the musical scaling. Now you have, let's take for example, a scaling like this. Now a sound at this particular scaling has a lesser frequency compared to the sound at this particular music scaling compared to sound at another scaling. So an increase in this scaling simply refers to the pitch. So the pitch is the position of that note on the musical scaling. So the higher the pitch, likewise the higher the frequency of the sound wave which is being produced. So pitch depends on the frequency of the vibration of the medium and the source, of course the source of the sound wave from which it has been emanated. So also we have loudness and intensity and that characteristics of sound waves now. Now first looking at intensity. Now intensity of a sound wave is the rate of flow of energy per unit area perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And like name implies, it says intensity. Now, the rate of flow of the sound energy per unit area perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Now, what does this simply talk about? Now, sound wave being propagated now from a source. Now, the ratio says the ratio of the rate of flow. Now, when you talk about rate of flow, we refer to power, rate of flow of energy. This power is rate of flow of energy with time. So it's the intensity talks about the rate of flow of the sound energy per unit area perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So the rate of flow, that is the rate of flow, the power of that sound wave per unit area is what refers to as the intensity of the sound wave. Now, intensity also has an effect on the loudness of the sound wave. And the higher the intensity of that particular sound, the louder the sensation of hearing to the human ear. So intensity simply is the ratio of the power generated by the sound wave to the area which is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So for a sound wave, flowing at a particular energy with respect to time over a particular area. The ratio of the power to the area is what referred to as intensity. And of course, it is measured in watts per meter squared because our power, which is the rate of flow of energy, is in watts. Our area is in meter squared. Now, loudness now. The loud, loudness of the sound is a sensation determined by the intensity of the sound and by the sensitivity of the observer's ear. I told us intensity. I told us intensity of the sound wave has to do with the rate of the energy flow. Energy with respect per unit time, which is the power. Now the rate of the flow of energy per unit time, per unit area, perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Now, is a function of the loudness. Now, the loudness of the sound is as a result of the intensity of that sound. So, which is brought about the propagation of the sound from one medium to another. So, as the sound wave travels from a particular source A 
the intensity, the higher the intensity, the louder the sound wave which you've been add or noticed by the observers here. That's why it says by the sensitivity of the observers here. So loudness and intensity goes hand in hand. Likewise, speech and frequency. And the last characteristics of sound wave here is the quality or tone and complexity. The characteristics of the musical intensity of overtones or harmonics accompanying the fundamental notes. Now, we'll be looking also at what overtones are, what are harmonics, and what are fundamental notes. And before we look at that, we have to first discuss what quality is now. Now, quality is a characteristic of the musical intensity of the overtones and the harmonics. Now, you have a fundamental note. The fundamental note has its initial frequency, fine. Now, you also have an overtone and, and harmonics. Now, overtones are, are, and harmonics are progressions of the fundamental frequency of the notes. So, a, characteristics, a characteristic of the musical intensity of such overtones and harmonics, which accompany the fundamental frequency is known as the quality. So, the quality of a particular let's say sound instrument now will be different from the quality of another sound instrument b why because the quality depends on the overtone harmonics which follows this particular frequency so for a particular sound source of um, particular sound instruments now with its own fundamental frequency now that is the fundamental frequency if this has its own fundamental frequency now the nature of the overtones and harmonics which follows and this can maybe five f not seven f not now the nature of the overtones and harmonics which are subsequent frequencies of the fundamental frequency which accompanies this now. Now this has a different overtone or harmonic when compared to this. So the quality of the notes of this source will be different from the quality of notes of the other source. Now to move on, we'll be understanding in depth what overtones and harmonics are all about. So quickly now, we'll be looking at some differences between sound waves, light waves, and radio waves. Now sound waves and light waves now sound waves and light waves some differences between sound waves and light waves now sound wave is a mechanical wave it's a mechanical wave why a light wave is an electromagnetic wave because sound wave requires material mediums whereas light wave being an electromagnetic wave does not require a material medium for its propagation so a sound wave which is a mechanical wave now, a sound wave is also a longitudinal wave. Now, if you recall from the previous lectures on waves, the longitudinal waves moves in the direction of its propagation. It moves in that direction. Why? An electromagnetic wave, which for light wave now, it is a transverse wave. The transverse wave moves perpendicularly to the direction of propagation of the wave i explained in subsequent classes so a sound wave is a longitudinal wave now it can travel through a vacuum that's for light waves now they don't require material medium so it can travel through vacuums through free space where a sound wave cannot travel through vacuum so light waves travel with the speed of light travel with the speed of light which is three times 10 raised per eight meter per second and this has its own speed in which it travels, maybe 340 meters per second. So looking at difference between sound waves and radio waves also. Now radio waves is also an electromagnetic wave. I'm talking about radio sound and radio waves now. Radio waves is also an electromagnetic wave. Sound wave is mechanical. The radio wave is also a transverse wave sound wave is a longitudinal wave now the radio wave travels through vacuum it does not require a material medium also but a sound wave requires a material medium now, a radio wave 
moves with the velocity of light, a sound wave will also not move with a velocity of light. Instead, sound travel depends on the medium through which it travels because sound is a mechanical wave and mechanic mechanical waves require material mediums for their propagation. So up next, we'll be looking at <coughs> vib force vibrations and resonance. Talking about force vibrations and, and resonance, <coughs> and from the layman interpretation of a forced vibration now. Now, I mean a vibration which is induced by an external force, right? Now, a force vibration results from an external periodic force acting on a system and setting the system vibrating at the same frequency as the external periodic force. Now, it is simple example now. Now, it says force vibration results from an external periodic force acting on a system and setting the system vibrating at the same frequency as that external periodic force. Now you have two objects now, A. Now A is being set into vibration now. This is to and fro movement. It begins to move to and fro. Force is being applied and external force is applied and moves with a particular frequency. Now along the line, because these two are on the same plane, along the line energy is also being transmitted or signals or impulses are transmitted and also B begins to move move also. Now the movements or vibrations of B as a result of the external force acting on A is what we refer to as forced vibrations. Now forced vibrations are a result of external periodic forces acting on a system setting that system vibrating at the same frequency as the external periodic force so the force which causes a to vibrate after a period of time will also cause b to vibrate also but in the other way when we are talking about resonance now now resonance is a phenomenon which occurs whenever a particular body or system is set in oscillation at its own natural frequency as a result of signals received from some other body or system vibrating with the same frequency. Now, resonance is a form of force vibrations. Now, the same instance here, you have two bodies A and B. Now, B begins to vibrate as a result of the external force on A. But in the case of resonance now, you have the object vibrating at its natural frequency. Now for forced vibrations, B is forced to vibrate at the same frequency in which A is vibrating. But in resonance, it is a simple phenomenon. Instead of B to vibrate at that frequency of A, it tends to vibrate at its own natural frequency. Now, the vibration of B in its own natural frequency is also as a result of some signals or impulse received from A. But in this case now, B does not vibrate with the same frequency as A, but at its own natural frequency. Now that natural frequency might be the frequency of A, but in this case now it is vibrating with its own natural frequency. So a resonance occurs whenever a particular body or system is set in oscillation at its own frequency the frequency in this case it is not forced when compared to a force vibration as a result of signals received from some other body or system so examples of force vibrations or resonance are what we see in a swing now now due to the movement of now you have a person located at this seat of the wing and of the swing and another person here now due to the vibration of movement to and fro movement of a in this swing now a person who is initially initially stationary at this seat of the swing with 
respect to time, the seat of this ring also begins to vibrate at a certain frequency. Now, the vibration of the seat of this ring is as a result of the forced vibrations from A. Another good example is what we see um, and when you have a source of water now, now for divers now, diver now standing on a springboard, now jumping up and down, up and down. Now the man exerts a force, a force vibration on the springboard begins to move up and down and the man is moving at a certain frequency now it begins to force the board to also vibrate at a particular frequency and that particular frequency was induced by the human now the man begins to jump till dives into the river now after the man has dived into the river the board will still be observed to be vibrating for some period of time and this phenomenon is also as a result of the effect of force vibrations and resonance. And also in rattling of windows now, or when you have windows that are being shattered, you have series of windows now. A window here is being shattered. Now, depending on the amount of force or force vibrations, the force applied on this particular window. Now, with time, cracks also begin to occur in B. And also in B, leads to, which leads to the rattling of the windows. Now, this phenomenon is also as a result of forced vibrations and resonance. So next, I'm looking at some formulas due to vibrations and waves, sound waves in strings now. Now, strings are basically a very good... is a very simple tool for explaining the movement of sound waves now you know that you have a string down fix that two point a and b and simple tapping the spring begins to vibrate about this fixed point a and b so this is a bit of sound waves now you begin to hear some types of disturbing you begin to hear some disturbances now, due to the oscillation or vibration of this string material in between air, now this is air, this is air. Now, when it is being tapped at a particular point, it begins to vibrate, begins to make some noise, causing of producing sound waves. And this is a lot of disturbances which are traveling through air particles. <laughs> so, we'll be looking at waves and <clears throat> waves in strings now. now a simple experiment carried out shows us that the frequency of vibration is inversely proportional to the length of the spring. And this is our length of the spring. Now, the frequency is inversely proportional to the length. The frequency is directly proportional to square roots of the period. Now, we recall that our period is a, num is a time taken to complete one oscillation. Recall from previous classes when I discussed some terminologies used in waves, some wave terminologies. The period is the time taken to complete one oscillation. So the period is the inverse of our frequency. But in this case now, it says frequency is inversely proportional to the length. Now you have a string of a certain mass that has a length and the period C now. Now I want to show the relationship between the frequency of vibration of this string with respect to the mass of the string, the length of the string, and the period C of the string. So the first instance here was the frequency is inversely proportional to length. It is directly proportional to square root of the period and it is inversely proportional to square root of the mass. And by combining these three relationships together you have a constant the constant which is 1 over 2 so this gives us 1 over 2 l all root c over m so the frequency for give for a given length tension and mass of this string is given as 1 over 2 l 
or root t over m and for a string in which we are given the tension in the string the length of the string and also the mass of the string now velocity is equal to f lambda and this is another formula which we'll be making use of velocity is equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength now in previous classes on waves you have the distance between two crests is what we refer to as the wavelength and the time taken to complete one oscillation of the wave from year to year back to year is what we refer to as the period the period c now the frequency is the number of cycles covered in one second now, how many cycles does this wave travel in one second is what we refer to as the frequency so and of course the wave moves with a particular velocity so the relationship between the velocity the frequency and the wavelength gives us v equals to f lambda a very important formula also which we'll be making use of so the first formula here which is this and for a string of given length tension and mass you can find the frequency of vibration of the string using this relationship now you can also find the velocity of sound waves now moving through any medium provided we are given the frequency and we also know the wavelengths of the sound wave so now we'll be looking at vibration in strings now vibration in strings so basically you have the string which i explained earlier now the string which is stationary string is stationary and the string has a length this is l which is the length of the string now upon vibration of the string upon vibration of the string upon vibration this is being vibrated at the middle now you have a transmission of wave like this is a and b now upon vibration Okay, sorry, it is my drawing is irregular. Now, upon vibration of this spring, the vibration, the sound wave travels because this place is fixed. It reflects and travels back to the origin. So this full travel is lambda, which is the wavelength from one node to another node, which is wavelength. But in the case where we have a stationary string now, so the distance this is a to b now halfway through the propagation of this wave now we say l is equals to lambda over 2 now for the first period of vibration if it is set into vibration you have a scenario like this in which the full length of travel is equals to lambda equals to lambda so for the fundamental frequency now now we are coming back to fundamental frequencies over tones and harmonics now the fundamental frequency for a string in vibration f now i want to find the fundamental frequency now we'll be able to tell us that the length of the string is the wavelength over two and if we recall that v is equal to f lambda so to find our fundamental frequency f will be equal to v over lambda now since lambda is l is equal to pi over 2 <coughs> lambda over 2 so our lambda will be equal to 2 l so that gives us v over 2 lambda so the fundamental frequency for a vibration in a string a simple string is given as v over 2 l this is our fundamental frequency so the derivation is what is here so L is equals to lambda over 2, lambda is equals to 2L. So F is equals to V over lambda. And because lambda is 2L, this. Now from this formula, so where this one was coined. Now for subsequent vibrations now, now harmonics and overtones now are further vibrations of that system. Now higher frequencies, which are whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. Now I explained 
during the explanation i was talking about quality now quality has to do with the intensity the characteristic intensities of the overtones or harmonics of the fundamental frequency now the first and basic frequency of vibration is what referred to as the fundamental frequency now any frequency higher or after than the fundamental frequencies are what we refer to as either overtones or harmonics overtones or harmonics so an overtone is an higher and softer or quieter frequency while an harmonic is an overtone which are whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency now the fundamental frequency is the lowest and strongest audible frequency now the first frequency fundamental frequency of vibration which is f naught now any frequency after the fundamental frequency can either be an overtone or an harmonics f1 f2 now when there is a simple progression simple arithmetic progression now whole number multiples of this in which f1 is probably f naught f2 is probably 2 f naught f3 is probably 3 f naught and so on and so forth refer to this as an harmonic so these are harmonics of the fundamental frequencies but in a case whereby they are not whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency we simply just have overtones so in a case like that now you can just have f naught f1 f2 and so on where f1 can be 4 f naught f2 can be 15 f naught and so on and so forth so these are not in simple progressions or whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency so in this case we simply say we have overtones so overtones are higher frequencies while harmonics are overtones they are higher frequencies also but a whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency okay so the harmonics or overtones now which are higher frequencies of the fundamental frequencies now so for f1 okay to talk of vibrations in strings okay this is the string i was making use of now the first vibration was this we have a wave like this this was this where our length is the wavelength over two now for the second vibration of the medium you have a okay let me draw it here you have and this is the second vibration of the string now in this case now our length is equals to three lambda over two for the first for the further vibration now so you want to find the harmonics or overtones now in this case now in the first instance for the fundamental frequency our lambda was l over 2 sorry our length was lambda over 2 for the fundamental frequency for the next higher frequency lambda was 3 pi over 2 now for the next also lambda will be 5 pi over 2 and so on and so forth sorry this is the first the next is lambda sorry okay i have it here f1 is equal to v over l f naught is v over 2 l so the fundamental frequency was f naught is v over 2 l where our wavelength was 2L or let me say the length was pi over 2 and for the next overtone for the next overtone of the string the length is equals to pi over 2 plus pi over 2 which gives us lambda sorry lambda not pi so the next overtone is lambda equals to pi for the next overtone which is lambda over 2 was lambda over 2 was lambda over 2 gives us 3 lambda over 2 this is the next overtone so basically we have 
using harmonic sound over tones now. Now the first harmonic is always the fundamental frequency. The first harmonic is always our the first harmonic is our fundamental frequency. This is the first harmonic. We have the second harmonic, the third harmonic. But for overtones now, the first harmonic. This is the first harmonic now. The second harmonic. This is the third harmonic. Now for overtones now. This is our fundamental frequency. But for overtones, the first overtone is F1. The second overtone is F2. So this is our first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, fundamental frequency, first overtone, second overtone, and so on and so forth. So that brings us continuously to this, which is our second overtone or the third harmonic, which is 3V over 2L, gives us 3 F notes. Okay, the summary of frequencies now, of vibrations in strings is summed up here now. Now, for the first length of the string, which was lambda over 2, the frequency was V over 2L. Now, you recall from V equals to F lambda, frequency is V over lambda. So, if our lambda is now equals to 2L, so we have V over 2L. For the first case, for the first case, L is equals to lambda over 2, lambda is equals to 2L. So f will be equals to v over 2l. Now for the second length, addition of lambda over 2 and another lambda over 2 gives us lambda. So if our lamb l is equals to lambda, so f v over lambda will be equals to v over l. For the third case, lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2 plus another lambda over 2 gives us 3 lambda over 2. So for that case, if our length is 3 lambda over 2, lambda will be equal to 2L over 3. So on substituting here, our F will be equal to V over 2L over 3 to so give us 3V over 2L. So for the fourth case, we should be lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2 plus lambda over 2 and so on and so forth. So if for each of the cases now, we have to signify our overtones or harmonics. Now, the first case, which is F0, fundamental frequency, that is our first harmonic. This is the first harmonic, this is the second harmonic, and this is the third harmonic. For overtones now, this is the fundamental frequency. This is the first overtone. This is the second overtone. Okay, so the fundamental frequency is always the lowest and the strongest of them all. The overtone is the higher frequency, softer. The harmonics are overtones which are whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. And now we'll be looking at velocity of sound waves now in different medium. The velocity of sound wave in air, 330 meter per second. Velocity of sound wave in water, 1005. Velocity of sound in a solid now, let's say steel. For example, is 5,000 meter per second. So the trend here is that the velocity of sound wave in a solid is greater than that of a gas. So, <clears throat> so the velocity of sound wave in a solid, the velocity of sound wave in a solid is greater than that of a gas. So velocity decreases in this order. Sorry, sorry. Is increase okay in conversely you can say velocity decreases in this order but increases from left to right so the velocity of sound in solids are higher when compared to velocity of sound in liquids higher compared to velocity of sound in gas so an air has the least medium of propagation of sound followed by liquid followed by solid so sound waves are faster in solids compared to liquids and also compared compared to gases so lastly we're looking at vibration in pipes and we have closed pipes and open pipes and for a closed pipe the length initial length is always lambda over four 
So if our initial length is lambda over 4, our fundamental frequency will be given as V over 4L. Recall that F is equal to V over lambda. So if L equals to lambda over 4, lambda will be equals to 4L. So which gives us V over 4L as our fundamental frequency. Now the overtones and the harmonics now. Now for the next vibration, the length is 3 pi, 3 lambda over 4. So our first overtone is 3V over 4L. Or our second harmonic is 3V over 4L. For the next vibration, the length is 5 lambda over 4. So we have our frequency as this. So in summary for closed pipes and open pipes, the first length is given as lambda over 4 for a closed pipe. For an open pipe, the first length is given as lambda over 2. The next progression is 3 lambda over 4. The next progression for an open pipe is lambda. The next progression here is 5 lambda over 4. The next progression here that's 3 lambda over 2. The next progression here is 7 lambda over 4. The next progression here is 5 lambda over 2. So this is basically the difference between a closed pipe and an open pipe. The lengths are different. So for the first harmonic of a closed pipe, the length is lambda over 4. Whereas we have lambda over 2 here. Here we have 3 lambda over 4, you have lambda, 5 lambda over 4, 3 lambda over 2, 7 lambda over 4, 5 lambda over 2, and so on and so forth. So using that ideology, we'll be able to derive all the formulas, and these are the formulas we'll be using in solving questions now. Okay, so lastly, we'll be looking at the velocity of sound in a resonant tube now. A simple experiments using a resonant tube. In a resonance tube, we have something like this. You have the level of water here, and you have a tuning fork which is being placed. Now, initially, you have a length, the length of water occupied, the initial length, and the final length after water is being turned over. So, the velocity of sound in a resonance tube experiment is given as 2f. L2 minus L1. So lastly, we also have echoes now. When you talk about echoes, sound waves are mechanical waves, and mechanical waves exhibit reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, but not polarization, if you recall. So the reflection of sound waves is what brings about echoes. And the formula for echoes is given as V is equal to 2D over T. Now, from the simple formula that velocity is equal to distance over time. Now, if you have a wall now, you are told that echo is due to reflection of sound waves. Now, the distance travels from initial distance, it hits the wall, travels back to so you have d1 you have d2 so 2d that's equals to the sum of the distance so light wave travel in sound wave traveling from the source the initial distance it's the wall or obstruction travels back to the source so our distance is 2d so that gives us the relationship that the velocity is equals to the two times the distance over time taken so now we'll be solving some examples. Okay, so the first example which we'll be looking at here. From an echo 2019 past question, objective question. It says the wavelength of sound produced by vibrating tuning fork is 1.5 meters. Calculate the frequency of the vibration if the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second. Now it says the wavelength of sound produced is 1.5 meters. The wavelength, which is lambda, it's given as 1.5. Now, calculate the frequency if we have the speed to be 330. Now, if we recall that V is equal to F lambda, to calculate our frequency, we just change your formula. So, F will be equal to V over lambda. Our velocity is given as 330, and the wavelength of the fork is given as 1.5 meters. 
so by just dividing 330 by 1.5 i have 220 so that's 1 to 2.2 times 10 raised to the power 2 hertz because that's the unit for frequency so answer is option b here okay you have another objective question on you know, sound waves also question 29 says the fundamental frequency of an air coulomb in an open pipe set into vibration is 120 hertz calculate the length of the pipe by giving the speed of sound now i want us to recall I told us we have open pipes and closed pipes i told us the first i told us the first length is lambda over two for an open pipe whereas for a closed pipe the first length is lambda over four so it says the fundamental frequency of an air in an open pipe and this is an open pipe the fundamental frequency for the first length is pi over two so i recall that v is equal to f lambda the total to calculate the length of the pipe so that brings us to the formula f naught is equal to v over 2l v is equal to f lambda f is equal to v over lambda now v over lambda and for an open pipe the initial length is pi over two, lambda over 2 so lambda is equal to 2l so the fundamental frequency for an open pipe is v over 2l now we are given the frequency and the speed we have to find the length so that gives us we have the speed we have the frequency but we don't have the length change of subject we have l equals to v over 2f naught so our speed was given as 340 the fundamental frequency given as 120 by solving we have 1.42 meters so our answer here is 1.42 meters so i have another example here question 30 it says a man standing between two cliffs blew a whistle and add echoes after two second and 2.5 second calculate the distance between the cliffs if the speed of sound in air is 340 meter per second so you simply have you have two cliffs and you have a man standing in between and the man blows a whistle and the echoes are add after two seconds and 2.5 seconds so what this simply interprets to us is that the whistle is being blown it hears the echo 2.5 two second and after 2.5 second now which means the sound of the whistle hits the first cliff and also hits the second cliff now this sound of the echo for the first cliff so the echo for the first cliff is had in two seconds and the second was 2.5 seconds so and the formula for velocity of sound waves in echoes it's given as v is equal to 2d over t which i gave us at the end of the class so the man standing between two cliffs the first echo comes after two seconds time two seconds the second comes after 2.5 seconds now this is the formula for velocity we have the velocity and the time but we have to calculate the distance so by simply cross multiplying and changing formula we have d is equal to v times t over 2 and for the first cliff and for the second cliff okay so that's 340 times 2 over 2 gives us 340 340 times 2.5 over 2 gives us 425 so we have to find the distance between the cliffs now for the first cliff the man gets the echo after two seconds so the distance from this cliff to the man is 340 for the next cliff he gets the echo after 2.5 seconds the distance from the cliff to the man is given as 425 so the distance between these two cliffs will be equal to 340 plus 425 that gives us 725 meters so the answer sorry 765 so the answer is d which is 765 meters okay so i have a theory question same echo 2019 and first Question 14 is, is what is a wave, which I expect us to define. So There's two differences between light waves and sound waves. And so it gives one defect of vision and corrective lens, and this is on light waves. Now I want to solve the 
calculate calculation aspect of the question. It says in a resonance tube experiment, a tuning fork of frequency 440 Hz produced the first loud sound when the water level in a pipe was 18.8 cm from the open end, and the second was at 57.3 cm. Now it says calculate the wavelength, the speed of sound in here, and the water level of the next resonance length. Okay. So the resonance tube experiment, which is the last thing I explained, I was going to tell us that you have a resonance tube, water at a level, and you have a tuning fork. Now this is the first level of water, L1. After the experiment, the next level of water, after water has been turned away, gives us L2 and so on and so forth. Now for the first length. For the first length, we have L1 to be equals to lambda over 4 plus C. The second length to give us 3 lambda over 4 plus C. The third length gives us 5 lambda over 4 plus C. And so on and so forth. And this is for an open tube. Resonant experiment open tube. Now this C is simply the end of correction end which is just the distance between this point and the part of the fork which ex extends outside so it may be negligible or not provided we are given the correction end but in the question here we are not given we are simply told the tuning fork has a frequency of 440 and the first sound was had at water level 18.8 second was had at water level 57.3 so and the formula is given as 2f is it to l2 minus l1 which i gave us at the end of the class so to find our wavelength speed and water level of the next resonance length so first find the velocity 2 times 440 multiplied by l2 minus l1 l2 is 57.3 so 2f l2 minus l1 gives me this so 2 times 440 give me 880. This gives me 3.85. Now velocity is 338.8, which I just round off to 339 meters per second. I will use the speed of sound in air, which is the velocity. Now recall that V is equal to F lambda. To find our wavelength, V over F. So our wavelength will be equal to our velocity, which is 339, divided by the frequency. Which is giving us 440 Hz. So our wavelength will be equal to 0 0.77 meters. And lastly, we have to find the water level of the next resonance level, next resonance length. And the first length is given as lambda over 4. The second is given as 3 lambda over 4. The last is given as 5 lambda over 4. So the next level of water for the next resonance length, which is L3, we've been given L1 and L2. To find L3, that will be 5 times lambda over 4. We're not given the correction, so we just take that negligible. So this gives us 5 times the wavelength, which is 0 0.77 divided by 4. So that gives us 3.85 divided by 4 gives us 0 0.9625. So that gives us converting back to centimeters. So the units we're giving was in centimeters. So I used centimeters here. Yeah, I used centimeters. Now, multiplying by 880, I had converted already. Okay. I had converted already to meters. So, I have it in meters per second. So, I find my velocity. Because we have lambda, I find the lambda. Velocity is in meter per second. And the frequency is in hertz. So, I have my wavelength in meters. So, that's why I have 5 times 0 0.77 over 4 in meters. So I convert back to centimeters. Now you can cross check now. Now it told us our first L1 is lambda over 4. Lambda over 4. So 
So to check it, our wavelength was 0 0.77 over 4. Now what does it give us? I don't know. I told us the next length is 3 lambda over 4. 3 lambda over 4. 3 times 0 0.77 over 4. What does it give us also? I don't know. Okay, so I have to check the 0 0.77, 0 0.77 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.1925 meters. Now 3 times 0 0.77 divided by 4 gives me 0 0.5775 meters. So I have to convert to centimeters. Converting to centimeters, I have 9.3 centimeters. And here I have 57.8 centimeters. Now, we check from the question given. It says the first level of the pipe was at 18.8 centimeters. The second was at 57.3 centimeters. So, which is approximately, 18.8 is approximately 19 centimeters. And 57.3 is approximately 57 centimeters also. So, which is roughly <coughs> equals to 19.3 and 57.8. Now, provided we're given the correction and correction now, these values might have reduced to give us 19 and 57 here. So you can see there is just a slight difference in values between the two. So that gives us and proves that our third or next resonance length will be 5 times lambda over 4, which is 96.3 centimeters. So I have another objective question here. Question 20 says, in which of the following media, the speed of sound the least, air, brass, water, wood, solid, liquid, and gas? I told us the speed of sound increases this way or it decreases this way. The speed of sound in a solid is higher than a liquid and higher than a gas. So air is a gas, brass solid, water is a liquid, wood is also a solid. Brass and wood has a higher speed of sound. Water also has a higher speed. So air which is a gas has the least speed and the speed of sound in air is 330 to 340 meters per second so the least speed here is air i have another example it says which of the following properties is not exhibited by sound waves diffraction polarization interference reflection sound wave is a mechanical wave and the mechanical wave can be reflected it can be interfered it can be diffracted it can't be polarized because it is not a transverse wave now it's only a transverse wave that can be polarized. An example of a transverse wave is light. Sound wave is a longitudinal wave. Okay, it says what type of wave is emitted by a loudspeaker? Transverse longitudinal gamma radio. A loudspeaker emits sound wave, and a sound wave is a longitudinal wave. So this says when an air column is set into vibrations, the distance between the two consecutive nodes of the resultant wave is dash. I told us for sound wave it travels to a string now set into vibration and the distance between the two consecutive loops is equal to the length which is half of the wavelength so we have one half of the wavelength okay so it says a girl standing some distance from the foot of a tall cliff says claps her hands and hears the echo 0 0.8 seconds later now calculate the distance from the cliff if the speed of sound in air is 320 meters per second. And the formula for echoes is 2d over t. To find the distance, we just change subject v times t over 2. The velocity was given as 320. The time taken was, the echo was at 0 0.8 seconds later. So 320 times 0 0.8 divided by 2 gives us 128 meters. So our answer here is 128 meters. I have another example here. Says the quality of a note depends on what the quality depends on the overtones. I told us the first fundamental frequency and the quality of that note depends on the overtones of the harmonics after the fundamental frequency. Okay, so the last example for today it says an observer hears an echo 1.2 seconds later after blowing a whistle near a cliff. Calculate the distance of the observer from the cliff. 
Now, we're giving the speed of sound in here as 330. Now, we're giving the speed as 330. By just changing our formula, you have D equals to V2 over 2. You have 330 times 1.26 divided by 2. So, our answer is 27.9 meters. I hope the class was interesting. If you have questions, please drop them in the comment section or send us an email. We would love to help you further. See you in the next class.